Okay, I'll get started. Hopefully a few other people will join us. Um, just first off, a little bit about myself. I am an Apache board member. I'm the v currently the VP of the Apache Incubator. Um, outside of Apache, I'm a, a freelance developer and educator, and I've been involved with Apache for, for a long time, mostly in the Incubator PMC in recent years, where I mentor several projects and I've reviewed hundreds of releases. Um, Probably around the five or six hundred mark. Uh, I've lost count. Uh, at somewhere around the, the four hundred mark. So, um, and I'm talking about the incubator today, and in particular about uh, mentors. And um, I'm going to give some advice to mentors and and how they can help their projects um, grow and become successful top level projects. So, first off, just a little bit about mentors and that. Uh, once a project joins the incubator, they generally have three or so mentors and they're chosen when the project starts. And um, the idea of a mentor is that it help guides the project to, to operate like an Apache project and follows them through its journey from bootstrapping all the way to graduation. Um, mentors may change over time, so you may not start out with the, the same mentors that you're finished with. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that a little later. So who can be become a mentor of um, a project? Well, currently it's only existing Incubator PMC members, but if you're an ASF member, you can ask to join the Incubator P PMC and you'll basically be added automatically. Uh, people who are not ASF members can also get voted on onto the Incubator PMC. If you're interested in becoming a mentor, you should just come by the incubator general mailing list and help out. Just vote on a few, few releases, help some users, you know, do a few things along those lines, and it's very, very likely that you'll be voted in as a member reasonably quickly. So what are the responsibilities of a mentor? Um, basically, they guide the project through, as I said, from the very initial stages of bootstrapping the project all the way through graduation. Um, and basically, your, your, your idea is to help nudge the project in the right direction, to make it follow and understand uh, ASF policies and guidelines, help in creating and voting on releases, and then finally helping with, with graduation. And this can take some time. It can be a two to three year commitment, and sometimes it, it can be more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Apache way, because that's what you're really doing when you're a mentor for a project. You're teaching the project about the Apache way and how to operate according to these values. Uh, there are different versions of the Apache way. I've, I've just put some of the values that I think are important, particularly to incubating projects here. And I'm going to go through them one by one. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is charity. Um, and basically, the Apache Software Foundation makes software for the public good at no charge. So that means that the, the project needs to operate in that way as well. Uh, so, sorry about that. Looks like we had a slight technical issue, and I'm uh, back now. Sorry, let me just share the slides and uh, we'll continue on. Right, I'm, I'm going to have to probably skip a couple of these slides. Uh, hopefully, we still have uh, some people here. Yep, we're good. So sorry about that interruption, and we'll just continue as we on. Uh, so um, the Apache way is also about community. So you know, we have a saying called "community over code," uh, and this means a lot of thing. Um, the two most important things here is that we want a diversity of people that are working on the project. 
and the project is about individuals, not companies. Um, we also have responsibility that is that is earned, um, and that we want discussions on the mailing list. So uh, that about that responsibility that is being earned, this is often referred to as merit, and individuals gain merit by contributing to a, to a project. Um, and the usual thing is that, that users become contributors, become committers, become PMC members. Um, and we want to see that the, the project is doing this uh, before it, it can, can graduate. Uh, I won't go into what the various roles are there. Um, these slides will be available after the thing because we, we, we just lost a few minutes there. Um, and the, whoops, sorry. And the, the last two things there is the one that is that the project needs to operate in an, an open way uh, so that everything is available to the public. Um, a code is publicly available as well. All discussions are, are made in the open. Uh, and it's important that these discussions are also archive, archived and they're searchable so that new users can actually see how past decisions were made um, and, and see how things have been done as well. So this acts as a repository for the communal knowledge of the, of the project. Um, the other thing is that these discussions then need to be asynchronous, and this means that it gives a chance for everyone to be involved uh, so that people don't have to be working full time on a project or they don't have to be in the same time zone um, to be able to know what's going on. Um, and the last one is that the projects work by consensus, consensus so that all decisions are made. Uh, by people agreeing on a way forward. Um, they may not agree that this is the best thing to do amongst all of them. There may be some even some disagreement, but at least they think that this is the way that the project can move forward with the least amount of conflict on the project. So it's a generally a good idea that you just use minor cons uh, lazy consensus for, for minor decisions. So, uh, you know, even down to just committing some code that's in most projects is usually uh, a lazy consensus uh, um, or you know, updating some documentation or things along those lines. So if you follow all these values, um, it basically ensures that the project is vendor neutral. So it's not controlled by one company uh, and that people are acting as individuals on this project, uh, not who they work for. It also means that you get a diverse bunch of people and that, that can be diverse along a, a, a number of axes. This can be from different backgrounds, uh, can be different skill sets, maybe it can be working from different companies, it can be uh, from different cultures as well. So um, it also means that people have trust in the project because they know that the project is following all of the ASF uh, policies and guidelines. Um, they know that the releases that they have made have made uh, have gone through some vetting process, uh, and this means that people are more likely to use our software. Uh, the other thing that it ensures is that the project's going to be around for a long time. Um, people will come into a project, they'll do some work on it, and then they may leave. Uh, and that's fine. This constant renewal of adding new committers and adding new PMC members means that the project hopefully will keep going and going and going. At some point in its life, you know, all things come to an end and the project may retire. So next I'm going to go through some common issues uh, that I've seen projects run into and some suggestions on, on how to deal with them. Um, and I've got um, I've got a list of ten. Um, hopefully, we still have some time for some questions after this. Uh, and if there's any other issues you want to bring up, I'll, I'll try and give some advice on on how to deal with those. Just before I get into these, I, I'm going to mention that that these are guidelines, not policy, and they're probably not even even calling them guidelines is probably too strong a word. Um, Projects work in a lot of different diverse ways and that there's, 
there's quite a, a, a variety in, in how programs operate. For example, some projects set the commit bar very low, and if you make a couple of uh, contributions to a project, uh, you'll be given made a, a commit straight away. Other projects, you have to basically make 100 pull requests and work full time six months on the project. Um, they are two extreme ends of a, of a spectrum. Uh, uh, hopefully, your project is somewhere in the middle there, uh, or even towards the, the low end as far as the, the committer bar goes. Uh, but you can see there already that the, quite a lot of diversity there. And there's also quite a number of ways to interpret the Apache way. Um, and it means different things to different people. So you are going to get projects that are doing it dif differently. So just going through those, um, uh, one of the, the most common issues um, is that projects uh, make a release, they make a release candidate, they vote on it on their own list, and then they put it up on the incubator uh, general list for a vote, and it can't get the number of votes in the reasonable amount of time. Um, this used to be a, a very big issue. In recent years, it's been less of an issue, uh, but we've had one or two issues recently I've, I've been noticing on this. Um, what you want to do in, in, to help the podling do get through this is, is try and simplify their release process so it makes it so that the release is easy to check. Um, making a checklist of what needs to be checked for the release is a, is a great idea, and having that published somewhere um, this makes it much easier for releases to be verified, and people who are not familiar to, with the project uh, can also check it. Um, you can also remind uh, mentors that it, it's their, their, one of their responsibilities is to vote on releases, uh, and so you can ask them to vote on releases. Um, and if uh, they have or uh, are not available, um, you can also kindly remind the, the incubator PMCs members to, to vote on the releases as well. Generally, uh, they're sending a mail to the general list with a, with a polite reminder, we'll, we'll get some action and you'll probably get someone voting on your release in the next day. If you have any questions as I go along, just please put them in the chat there uh, and I'll, I'll answer them. So also on the subject of releases, oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> also on the subject of releases, one of the other problems that I've currently run into is that a project will make too many release candidates. Uh, they'll make a release candidate, they'll test it, they'll find there's something wrong with it, they'll then make another one, and there's something wrong with that, and they'll make another one, and there's something wrong with that. I think the worst I've seen was 11 release candidates. Um, hopefully, your project doesn't make that many. But uh, there's a few ways you can you can deal with this. I think the best way is to tell the project just to slow down a little bit and take more time to review each of the release candidates. Um, going back to my previous point, um, make sure that they have a checklist and they're following a checklist uh, when you're doing that. The other thing is that if you, if you have this checklist, make sure that you check everything on the list and not just get to a point, find an error and stop, because there may be other things that still need to be corrected after that. And it's often better to try and fix more than one thing in a release candidate. Uh, so then you won't go through so many uh, release candidates. Uh, in the vote mails, try and encourage people to say what was checked and what platform that they, they, they checked this on. Uh, so that can help reduce the number of release candidates as, as well. Because uh, it means if you know if someone knows that they've checked it on one platform, uh, they can check it on another one and hopefully won't discover any issues that don't exist on that, that, that platform. Also make sure that the release process is, is documented and that release process is kept up to date. Again, you want to try and aim for uh, hopefully that someone who's new to the project could follow that re release process and, and make a release themselves. The other common problem that I see with projects is um, sometimes, particularly when they're starting out, they're unsure when to recognize new committers. Uh, and this, in part, I think, is because of the wide variety of, of projects that um, the bar that they set for committership. 
as I was saying before, some projects you have to basically be working full time for six months on them before you be committer, and others you could just have to submit a couple of pull requests and you're likely to be made a, a, a committer. So my advice for this is um, actually have the project discuss what it means to be a committer. And once that discussion has, has come to, to a bit of a conclusion, have them document this on their, their website or something. So it means that everyone has a clear understanding uh, of what it needs to be a committer and a PMC member as well. Um, I would encourage people to keep the bar low. Um, some projects have this idea that you know their, their code is precious and they don't want people um, breaking things, but any commit is just a revert away. Uh, and if you have got good testing infrastructure, then, then it, it, it's not a big risk giving someone a commit bit. The other thing is to, to encourage the, the project to recognize all forms of contribution. So not just code contributions, but also recognize people who write tests, who help users, who speak at conferences, who run meetups, who write documentation, who create logos and do all the other things that needs to be done on a project other than just code. If the issue is that they have a high bar to become a PMC member, and this is a project where uh, there's no separation between the committers and the PMC, then it might be a good idea to break those into two groups. Um, so that means that the committers can have a lower bar than the PMC members, and it's easier to become a, a committer. Uh, one other thing uh, you could also suggest, and I see this on a, on a few projects, is it's very easy to recognize the people that come along and are very active and, and make a lot of contributions in a short time. It's not so easy sometimes to recognize the people who are committing in small amounts over a longer period of time. So I encourage people to, to, to look through uh, you know, the history of commits and see who's who's in this second group as well as the people that are very easy to recognize and hopefully they can become committers as well. So another common issue is that discussions are happening off the off list and not on the mailing list. Um, and the best way to try and correct this is just to, you know, encourage them to talk on list and explain why it's important. And perhaps I'll explain why it's important here. And, and it's important for, for a number of reasons. We, we want all people to be able to contribute and people who are in different time zones are not going to be able to maybe contribute uh, into where these other discussions are happening. It depends where these off list discussions are occurring, of course. Uh, you also want to try and have more asynchronous conflict discussions, because that means, again, people in different time zones can contribute. And also means people who can only work at a part time or a hobbyist can also contribute, uh, rather than people who are just working on it you know, full time. If, if, and now it doesn't mean that you can't have these conversations off list. Um, you know, a lot of projects use Slack or, or something similar like that to have, have conversations on. But what's important is that if these things are discussed on that list, that they're brought back to the mailing list so that the wider community can be involved and have input on that as well. Um, another way that you can uh, look into this is uh, have some way of mirroring those conversations to the mailing list uh, so that is also searchable and archivable. Uh, so can people can easily find this information. Um, instant messaging tends to have a very low information content. It's, there's a lot of chatter, but not a lot of you know, detail or information. Um, having people write emails means that they're often a more careful with what they write, um, and it has more information inside it. Um, emails are also are good for organizing information. So the, the emails have subjects and there's threading. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot to be said for keeping the dis uh, discussion happening on the mailing lists. So um, one other problem you might have with the mailing lists is that there's too much talk happening on one of the private lists. 
Um, this is pretty easy for remedying. Just remind the podling what the private list is for, i.e. it should be for matters of security, uh, voting in new committers and PMC members, and if there's any conflict uh, between individuals in the project. And just about everything else should be on the dev list. Uh, and this is you know, part of the, the project being open and transparent and that anyone can come along and see that information and join in and contribute. Uh, one other issue with um, mailing lists is that some projects seem to send a, a lot of GitHub notifications to the mailing lists. Uh, and this can make it hard to follow conversations on there uh, and for people outside the project to, to, to get involved. Um, so what you can do is you can you can filter easily filter what messages are sent to the, the mailing list. Um, or you can even split that traffic up to another mailing list. So you can make up a commits mailing list was, was something along those lines. Um, one other issue that can come up is that some projects like to have uh, synchronous video meetings, say once every couple of weeks or once a month or something like that. I would try and discourage that. Um, why it's a good idea to occasionally get people face to face and, and having a chat. Uh, you know, information can be conveyed a lot easier if, if you do this. Uh, it it does mean that other people can't get involved, and generally you, you have the same issues here along the time zones, uh, or people who are, who are not working full time on the project can't be involved in these meetings. So, if the project does want to have these to to do these, and there are a couple of projects that do this quite successfully, um, then you need to make sure that. Uh, that you can get as many people as possible in, in, is involved. So you know they're not using some sort of internal company system to have these meetings that no one outside that one company can access. Um, and encourage that that everything that is discussed in these meetings be brought back to the mailing list. Um, and also document what's going to be discussed in advance, so people are aware of it and can contribute, even if they can't make it along to the to the, the meeting. Uh, one thing that I've seen recently, which has become a, a bit of an issue, is that uh, projects that come to the incubator, and they may, and these are existing projects that already have a web presence and, and so forth, is they may have some existing external websites that has information about the project. Um, it's really, really important that the PMC has control of these websites, uh, and. Um, you need to point this out to the project fairly early on. I've seen recently a few projects that have got to the point of graduation and these issues have come up and it's, it's stalled that graduation or it's delayed it by, by a few months while they've tried to sort this out. If possible, you want to make it have so that the website is moved to AFF infra infrastructure and you also want the PMC to be able to control that, not just some people from a certain company. Um, a good idea is to basically get rid of the site altogether and just have the domain name and have it redirect to the Apache site. Um, and, and, and as I said, just don't leave this just to just before graduation because it's going to cause cause some issues. So during your journey of the, you know, typically one and a half, two, th sometimes longer of becoming it, um, you might find that some of your other mentors have gone missing. So there's a, a few things that you can do to, to select this, help this. Um, my, the first thing would be try and select the right mentors, mentors in the first place when starting out. Uh, look at their track record and how involved they have been in other projects that they have mentored. Um, and in particular, if they're a good fit for the technology or the project. Um, now, sometimes people may just go missing in you know for, for for one reason or another for for a month or two and then they're back again so certainly reach out to them and ask them you know what what's what's going on and, and are you if you're still interested in being involved in the project and continue to still you know perform the responsibility of being a mentor and, and quite often you'll just get an answer back that says oh no you know i just you know uh, my family's just had a new kid or i've just moved house or I've got a new job or something along those lines. I mean, all these things happen to us, it's particularly in the space of a couple of years, there can often be some, some major events in someone's life. Um, 
So hopefully that the, the you know this is a temporary thing and they'll be able to come back and, and help with the project again. Um, if they can't do that, then you really need to find some new mentors. And it's it's better if you do that earlier rather than later. And the best way to do that is just to come back to the incubator general list and ask for them. Uh, and, and hopefully you'll get some people who are interested in helping out. So uh, another one I got here, which is, has come up a few times, is that uh, sometimes projects want to seek an early exit from the incubator before they are, they are perhaps ready. The first thing I would suggest in, in with this is the working out why they want to graduate. And occasionally this sort of sort of set is, is meant to be in line with some artificial deadline, like there's a conference coming up or they've got a new, uh, they're going to make their 1.0 release or something along those lines. Um, and, you know, just try and make it so that those two things are not connected together. If a project is getting close to get, being graduation or, or is, is still not, but still not being ready to graduate, then provide feedback on the Podlings report. Um, all mentors sign off the, the report uh, quarterly once, once a project gets established. Um, and there's space to leave comments in there. So you can add some comments and say, uh, you know, well, the, you, you know, great progress so far, but you know, we still need to do some work on making a few more releases with some different release managers or something along, the, along those lines. Um, also encourage the project to fill in the maturity model. Uh, it, it's not a compulsory thing, but it gives a good idea of where a project is um, and what gaps they can need to fill. So, you know, have them reflect on that. And it may be that some of those gaps, uh, hopefully some of those gaps will appear and be quite obvious to them. Um, and that actually shows that they may be closer to graduation than, than you may have thought that they were. So that's it from me on um, my advice to mentors. Are there any questions? If so, just type them in the chat there. Or if there are any other issues that mentors have uncovered encountered with uh, with podlings and want to discuss those, um, please mention those and I'll, I'll see if I can offer some advice on that. Yes, and as Paul's is saying there, please sign up a mentor if you want to help out the incubator. And um, I have to say one thing about being a mentor is that you'll learn a lot yourself. You'll learn a lot about how uh, the ASF operates. You'll learn more about the policies and procedures in the ASF. And you'll also, um, you know, it's a rewarding thing helping a project uh, from its start all the way to becoming a top level project. I think we still have five minutes for questions, but if we don't have any, I'll, we'll call it a day and I'll let you go on to your next session. Okay, I don't think we have any more questions, so we'll, we'll just leave it as it is. Thanks everyone for coming along to my session.